Okay, so I think it's time to start. Good evening, everybody. So nice to see all of you here tonight. And this lecture will be in English, and it is translated into Dansk, Svenska, and Dutch, uh, German. No Dutch, yeah. German. So anyhow, let's start. Uh, so this lecture tonight is about cycles and sustainable development. So it is uh, a lecture where I will talk a lot about our present situation on this planet and maybe we can see if some or many of the problems that we have today, difficult problems that we are all facing on this planet, if we can find some solutions from the laws of life that Martinez presents to us. So let's start with seeing a little bit about the universe and orienting ourselves. And I mean, if someone asked me where I live, I probably would say that I live in the south of Sweden, in Lund. I mean, another way of putting it would be that I live in the outskirts of the Milky Way. <laughs> so that's a bigger perspective. And when we see the galaxy where we live, the Milky Way, it's really beautiful. And we can see it's very well structured. It's a spiral. And we also see that here's the sun, and that is where we live. And we know that the planet is orbiting around the sun. So when we look up into the sky uh, at night and we see all the stars, it looks like it's only chaos. But it's not chaos. It's actually an order, it's structure everywhere in the universe. And if we go to our own solar system, we can see that there is also this structure. And we all know that our own planet is here, it's the third planet uh, around the, the sun. And all the planets have their orbits, they all have their cycles. And it seems pretty structured and quite beautiful as well. And actually, we see the same kind of structure if we go into microcosmos, if we look into our uh, atoms, for example. We see that it's pretty much the same structure here as we saw out in space. So it seems that life itself is uh, very much structured. There is logic. And where there is logic, there is also a consciousness behind. When we see our planet, I think when I see this photo of our planet, I realize that I get pretty emotional. It's like it's almost talking to me. It's almost like it is a living being. And that is exactly what Martina says. He says, all of these kind of structures that we have seen now, we have seen the galaxy, we have seen our solar system, we see the planet. They are all living beings. And that might also be the reason why we actually have a kind of a feeling for our Earth. We, some call it Mother Earth. And I've heard stories where astronauts have told that when they see, when they are returning to the planet, they become almost religious when they see the, the planet from this perspective. So there are also scientists today who have started to think in this direction. Maybe all of these systems that we see on this planet, when we uh, look at them together, it looks like it's almost, they say, it's almost like a living being. And of course, for us today, it is pretty difficult to really understand that it is a living being. I can't really connect with it in that way. I can't talk with it as I can with you. But somehow I can have a feeling for it, and it is my home. And it is the place which I have to take care of, because it's the only way I can live on. I mean, maybe I could make myself a rocket and go out into space, but probably this is the place that, where we have to stay and live, and this is the place we have to take care of. So we know from science some of the history of our planet. And I mean, it was formed billions of years ago. And the first bacteria and so on, they emerged probably some billions of years ago also. 
but we can see on this uh, geologic time scale that we have some first animal traces here like 600 million years ago and we see all of this evolution with uh, bigger animals, reptiles, these big fern trees and we get onto the dinosaurs and then they were wiped out and we got mammals and here we have man emerging. So that was like almost two million years ago or something like that and we can understand that in a way there have been so much of life going on until we got here. Or has it actually? Because this is the scientific way of looking upon life. Like there are different life forms but they are not really connected. But if we look at the way that Martinez explains evolution, he brings another perspective to this. Because he also shows that we have been through the mineral kingdom, the, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom. And right now we are at the last part of the animal kingdom and we are heading towards a real human kingdom. He doesn't really call us human beings and you shouldn't be offended by that. But that is because he knows what is coming. He knows that he will, we will all become Christ beings, all expressing love to each other. And right now our expression here in life is sort of a mixture of love and hatred and lots of different things in between. But, so this is the part of life that exists on this earth today and what scientists can also look into. And we could look at these steps as different steps in our evolution. But Martinez also says it's we who have done, who have gone through this evolution. It's we who once were minerals, we have been plants, we have been animals and we are the ones who are heading towards the real human kingdom. So it's not a dead universe as scientists presented. Present it. it's, a, it's a live universe. And we can see that there is also something else. At every step in this evolution, we are connected to something else, which Martinus calls our superconsciousness. And in the superconsciousness, we have this X2, this faculty to experience, to create life. We could think of it as a hard disk in a way. It's a place where we store everything we go through and we sort of store the essence of it. So in every new lifetime, and of course Martinus talks about reincarnation, so every time we are born, what we have stored here will come back uh, to us through the genes, through our bodies, through I mean, the genes and so on, they are sort of the physical part of something which is truly spiritual. So throughout our lifetimes, we will gradually learn more. We will experience, we will learn, we will evolve unto new types of beings. And all the time, there is also this white part, which is the I, that we heard a little bit about this morning in the morning lecture which is the eternal part, it's the point of stillness. Everything else is energy and it's constantly moving, it's constantly revolving around us. But we also have this eye, this point of stillness, which is actually all the contrasts coming together. As we saw this morning, it's all the different types of light, all the different types of colors, coming together like a backward prisma, so it's only white light. So it actually looks like our evolution is like a timeline, but Martinez says this is just a tiny part of our evolution. And if we look at it from a wider perspective, we will see that all kinds of evolution is a cycle, and it's actually a spiral cycle. And that is a lot of what we will talk about today because that form is sort of the fundament, is the basis of all kind of creation of life. And that is also the basis that we have to understand to be able to create sustainable life on this uh, planet. So we know about this transition from ape to different stages and to the kind of man that we are today. And of course we have evolved even longer. 
we are not carrying around a hunting stick today. Today, it's more like we're carrying around an iPhone or a computer or something like that. But even if we seem to be quite civilized and quite advanced, uh, we could say that we have a lot of the animal parts still inside of us. We are still acting a lot of uh, the animal instincts that we had, uh, that we have evolved during a long period. And it is because of this acting out of instincts and out of gravity, it's a bad combination to, to combine these instincts that we learned as animals and with gravity, which is the force that makes us want to be the best, the most powerful, uh, and a uh, being that can kill, and so on. It is this combination that uh, creates all of these problems that we have on this planet today. And of course, we all know about pollution and so on. And I guess if we had a guest from another planet coming here, or if someone would look at our planet, they would, I wonder what they would think of us. Would they think that we are really intelligent beings? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like right now we, we are handling our planet like we have climbed a tree and we are sitting on a branch and we are constantly trying to cut the branch down. We are sort of destroying the only earth we have for our, to live on. But, but uh, as I said, as, as plants and animals, we had lots of instinct. And instinct is an automatic function. It what make my heart beat, and it controls all the functions in my body. And it also still controls many of my mental functions. Because as animals, it's very important that we can react. If there is something dangerous, I have to fly, or I have to, maybe I can be aggressive and attack, but I have to react. And it's just out of instinct. So animals, they just have an instinct, which is a kind of automatic consciousness which uh, just tells them what to eat and how to mate and how to live their lives. And as this, this kind of terrestrial beings that we are today, we still have some of these instincts. And uh, that is also, and especially in the first stages of evolution, uh, we had lots of these instincts. So you could say that native people or different kind of primitive tribes and so on, and we have lived like this for thousands and thousands of years. They have this instinct, and uh, this instinct tells them, actually, because they don't have so much gravity yet, so just from pure instinct, they will feel very much connected to nature. They will respect nature, they will just use what they need, and they will live in balance with nature. So today many people look back at, uh, at these stages and think that, for example, Indians, they had a better relationship to nature than we have today. They actually took care of it and they couldn't understand when white men came that it was possible to actually possess land. They thought it belonged to everybody. So we had a good relationship to, to nature once, but then slowly our uh, different abilities have grown and we have grown more of, of gravity, more of feeling and, uh, and also of uh, intelligence. So, we, and we can see this on, on this symbol where we have the different kingdoms here, the plant, the animal kingdom, the real human kingdom, and more advanced kingdoms. So right now we are here, and we can see the combination of energies that we have. We still have lots of instincts, and we still have gravity, which is the principle of killing, it's aggression, it's wanting the most for myself. And we can see that we have also evolved a lot of feeling. And because of this feeling, we have become religious beings. We wanted to be... Uh, I mean, we got, we got uh, tired of, of being in this killing principle, so we wanted uh, a higher perspective. We wanted to be loving beings, and in that way we could become religious. But during this time we have also lost some of our instincts, and then we are not so much, we don't feel really 
any longer that we are part of this planet. We don't feel so much that we are part of uh, nature. So, and in this way, we could say that uh, when uh, evolution moves on, we are more and more interested in science. And that is because our intelligence is, grow is growing. And at this stage, man has lost his instinct for being respectful for nature. And now he has new gods. We have even, uh, mo or many people on this planet uh, have left the old gods like they, they are not longer in Christianity and Buddhism and Islam and so on. So instead they have new gods and science, science, science is one of the new gods and maybe the other one would be money. So now we have become intelligent beings. And of course, with intelligence and the combination of gravity still being there and some instinct, we think we are the rulers of this planet and we want to use it for our purposes. So we try to make the most money out of it. We realize that we can cut down the woods and we can sell it and we can become rich. And the more intelligence we evolve, the more we find very refined methods of making use of the resources on, on this planet. And of course, many of the things that people have come up uh, with, they are very beneficial for us. I mean, we all like our cars and our modern houses and taking a nice shower and so on, having warm houses. But still, we haven't found a sustainable way of having a comfortable life. And this, of course, is a very tricky situation because we have realized that we we don't really want to go back and live like people lived 100, 200, 300 years ago. We want this comfortable life, but we are not able right now to create it in a way that is sustainable. And we are constantly, uh, actually, I mean, as human beings, we are the biggest threat to, to this planet. So I just Googled threats to our environment, and I mean, I found all of these things, and there is an immense list of all the threats that we as human beings are um, putting out there. And of course, you've all heard about climate change and uh, deforestation, which means that the forests are take, being taken down and pollution and so on. And it seems pretty rough. It seems that we are really at a critical point in the evolution of, uh, of this planet. Now, in science, there is a strange concept because they talk about evolution, but it seems like they think that right now evolution ha has stopped and we should be at this point constantly. So they don't really uh, think that what is going on right now is also part of our evolution. But Ma Martinez says on the contrary that what we are seeing right now is actually something natural. It is against the laws of nature, but it's natural for a human being right now to be like that. And we have, as I said, developed this devil consciousness where we are using our intelligence in a very devilish way. So all of these things that we are uh, doing for our planet right now, all of these uh, terrible things, it's because we don't really know uh, what we are doing and we are so much involved in making money and being the best and so on and uh, it's very difficult right now to stop this uh, uh, evolution and we can see that we have all of these conferences around the world where they try to do something about the climate change and global heating and so on and every time they end up with almost no results. And that is because our level of consciousness, we don't really want to, to leave this comfortable life. And right now we have masses of people coming from Asia and Africa and so on, and they also want this good life. So one could really ask uh, ourselves, is it possible to develop a sustainable way of living, or are we slowly or quite fast right now killing ourselves? Well. Here we have to have a, uh, the right perspective because actually we are right, we, we are only cells on this planet. We are not the ruler of this planet. That's the planet itself. 
So the planet is an evolved being, and Martinez actually t- tells us that it's a being that is just on the verge of getting its cosmic consciousness. So actually, the planet is more evolved than we are. But what we see right now, it's sort of the last cleansing period for the, for the planet to clean out the last parts of its, uh, uh, of its uh, egoistic parts, of its animals' parts. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't uh, do anything about the present situation. But Martino te- uh, clearly tells us that, that we cannot kill this planet. In the same way that uh, my atoms, they can't really kill myself. I'm in charge of my body. And I'm the one who is charging and uh, making my, my body alive. And in this way, we are constantly affected by this planet. So it's actually, in a way, we are playing a part in the planet's life. But of course, we are also playing a part in our own lives. And we have to uh, come up with new solutions for uh, many of these things that uh, currently destroys the the planet. So as I said before, we are in a constant evolution. And it's not linear, it's, it's a cycle. And we can see these colors, they represent the basic energies uh, and I think most of you know them, like, like memory and instinct and gravity, feeling, intelligence and intuition. And we could see that this, as Martinez calls it, the main symbol, uh, this is the part which we know today, this mineral, plant and animal kingdom. And we can see that there is more. But this main symbol, it also shows the principle of all evolution. It shows the principle how everything is evolving in this kind of template, you could say. It's it's a kind of basic way of all processes of life. So it's not only the spiral cycle, but you could apply this to uh, everything. And here you see it from an even bigger perspective. Here uh, we have the planet, uh, the... uh, we have ourselves today, and we can see that we will evolve, and we will not come back as human beings, we will come back as planets. And in the next spiral cycle, we will become a solar system, and then a galaxy. And we can also go backwards in our history and see that we have been organs, we have been uh, cells and atoms, molecules, and so on. And this is not an end. It's just a part of evolution that Martinus shows to us. So we are infinite beings, and we are on this eternal journey, uh, constantly moving to new life forms. And we can also see that life is always built of life. There are always other life forms that build up higher life forms. So that actually there is nothing dead in the universe. In science, they have this concept that dead atoms and molecules can build up life. And that is a very strange concept, that dead matter can form life. So from a cosmic perspective, Martinez tells us that there is always life. There is life, building life on every level. Here's another way of looking at the cycle. And here we also see the different kingdoms but Martinez has divided it into four parts here. He calls it the winter zone, and spring, and summer, and autumn. And that is also a principle that everything is following. I mean, we know the year, of course, it follows this pattern. But we could also say a day, we have the morning, and then the sun rises, and they have midday, and then we're We're going into the, well, maybe this is the night and so on. But we can see that we have a cycle also in a day and a night. And everything we go through is like a process. When we have a problem, when we go through something in life, it also follows this basic pattern. Uh, If we're learning something, it also follows this basic pattern. I mean, in the beginning, we we don't really know how how something works, and but then it becomes very physical. We also involve feeling and our intelligence. 
and then we become slowly a genius in something, and then in the end we sort of uh, we are tired of it and we we uh, just remember it. So this is a basic principle that everything is following, and it can actually help us to to process what is going on in our lives, because there is nothing static. There is always a movement, and it's good to know. Uh, so right now, we are developing a lot of intelligence, and once intelligence become uh, has a gets a balance with feeling, then we can also get a bit of intuition, which means that we will get some glimpses of of uh, of uh, ready-made, you could say, analysis. We will actually see the universe. But right now, mostly people are not in that kind of balance. We are very unbalanced. We have many people have developed a little bit too much of intelligence. I mean, it's not too much for the universe, but it might be, create an inner imbalance. And because of that, they have uh, they have left uh, religions and they go into science. But quite often, this is a tricky time because I mean, once you go through something difficult, you might lose some, someone you love, or you lose your job, or you lose your money. It doesn't really help that you know the distance to the sun, or if you can, uh, you can calculate some difficult equations or something like that. It doesn't help when deep things uh, happen to you. So man today goes through all kinds of uh, difficulties with depression and agony and feeling very lonely. So actually the materialistic stage is quite short because it brings this loneliness and it also brings the feeling that we are not whole. We don't feel connected to nature any longer. We're actually destroying nature. We, d we are sort of afraid of each other. I mean the animals, they are, uh, it's good for them to have fear because uh, then they will run away if something dangerous happens. But we also carry around this fear, and it makes us afraid of each other, and it makes us afraid of very stupid things like we're thinking, can I pay the mortgage next year, and what about the stock market, and lots of things are going on in our mind. And with our intelligence, we have this kind of fantasy, and we can make up problems that are not uh, really there. And we are uh, constantly scared of things. And of course, when we are scared, we are trying to protect ourselves. So we build our fortresses, we build our homes, we, we try to build a family and money and power and different things to protect ourselves. But it doesn't help, because we all know that suddenly uh, something uh, hits everybody. Everybody has to go through bad times. So. A lot uh, uh, in this period right now, we are trying to fill this emptiness we have inside. With, we try to fill it with matter and experiences. We buy things, we repair our houses, we redecorate, we go on long journeys. And well, it keeps us busy for a while, but it doesn't really fill us with what we really want. Because what we really want right now is to feel connected to feel connected to each other, to feel connected to nature and God and universe, whatever we call it. We need this connectedness, and uh, people have lost it today. And with all these materialists, we are sort of destroying uh, the world. We are, we are consuming too much for the moment. And uh, as we, we don't do it in a sustainable way, this is what many people think will happen. We will collapse. We will have a financial crisis. We will do. We will have a global warming and, and so on. And to some extent, that might also happen, uh, according to Martinez. We will have collapses. We will go through difficult times, and that is uh, that is essential that we do that, because as long as we are not willing to change, as long as we are not willing to see that there is more than matter in the universe, we will face problems. And we will do it on a personal level. We will have our personal collapses, but there might also be things on this earth where, where different structures will, will collapse. But it is also the rise of something new. 
So it's actually the old part collapsing, the old part, uh, uh, which is the animal part that has to go away. So uh, essentially, this will be a, a good time, even if it will be uh, very difficult, of course. So we can see that the cycle is a form in nature that we have to understand to build something sustainable. And it can be used in many ways. And we also have to understand that, as I said before, life is always built from life. So right now we are trying to fill, uh, fill our lives with matter. And what we will do in the future is to fill our lives with life. So that is what will make us very happy and very much alive. And some are, I mean, basically we face three challenges today. It has to do with economy, it has to do with social things, how we form our communities, and it also has to do with environment, uh, what we do to, to this planet. And we are not alone in our struggle here. We are constantly in contact with other cosmic uh, beings. There is what Martinus calls providence. There are lots of spiritual beings who are constantly sending thoughts and help to us. And basically you could say that this is, in this symbol Martinus says that the, the God is sending out his love, his cosmic impulses to the whole of the universe. And this is the planet Earth. So we are receiving some of these impulses and we do it directly, but also in an indirect way through all the uh, disconnected beings that are helping this planet. So it's very good to know that there will be uh, inspiration and also intuition which will help people to come up with solutions. Because right now we don't really know, for example, how can we cl clean the planet from all the radiation we have created with atom bombs, atom uh, energy plants and so on. How can we clean the planet from all the heavy metals we have put out there, all the strange chemicals? How can we clean? So it's a lot of cleansing that has to be uh, done. And I'm quite sure that we will get, uh, I mean, we will get uh, scientists and so on who are more in contact with the laws of life and they will come up with solutions. And on another, from another perspective, you could say that all this, that physical cleansing that has to be done here on this planet is just another uh, aspect of the mental cleansing that we all have to do. So in the outer world, it's, it's a kind of picture what is going on inside ourselves. And inside ourselves, we have these, uh, still have some animal thoughts, and that is what we can see on our planet in how we treat environment and so on. Oh, I didn't give you the quotation, so I skipped that one. Uh, but uh, I will move into talking a little bit about economy. And we all know that we have many problems with our economy today. There are constantly financial crises and uh, economic crises. And we know that it's really touching people also in Europe. It's not only the uh, the uh, third world and, and so on, but uh, it's also coming to our parts of the world. And Martinez says that because we have become so materialistic, because we can combine this intelligence with gravity, we have come up with what he calls a false business principle. And that, pre and that is the business principle we have today, which is very simple. I try to make something as cheap as possible, and then I sell it as expensive as possible. So it's very simple, and it's called capitalism, and that is what all companies do. But actually what we do from a, a cosmic point of view is that we are robbing people. We are con the, the, with the false business principle, companies and whoever tries to sell something for a false value and get more money for, uh, than it's really worth, they are constantly robbing people. So we have, through this uh, business principle, we can say that we have made crime, uh, it's possible to commit crimes against each other. And it's uh, actually something that our uh, countries and, 
and governments, and so they really want us to commit this crime. They think that capitalism is the only way that uh, this uh, our society can work. But there is another very simple business principle, and that is that you sell th something for, for exactly the amount of money that it has taken you to, to produce it. So that's the correct, that's the real, that's the cosmic business principle. And uh, Martinez says that, of, I mean, right now we have to really uh, sort of feel capitalism in our flesh and our blood. We have to feel what it's doing to us. And we can see that right now it's creating all of these crises, it's creating unemployment and lots of problems. And that is because it's not according to the laws of life. It doesn't, I mean, in the way that money works today, money isn't flowing, it's not following the cycle. Uh, a natural cycle would be that money is constantly flowing and constantly moving, but now money is stuck in the rich countries and with some very rich people, and so many people on this planet, they don't have hardly any money or anything to eat or any, anything at all. So we can see that that's not according to the laws of life. That would be like I, when I eat, I would only feed some parts of my body and some parts would always starve. Then, of course, I would get very sick. So it doesn't work. Uh, I mean, we have to feed everybody. Every living being on this planet is important. And we have to find another uh, economic system. And we can all already see that happening on this planet, that many people are trying out new systems, like Bitcoin, which is uh, it's a currency that you use uh, on your computer. So it's a worldwide currency. Instead of, now you have national currencies, which means that you can speculate in different ways. Well, of course, people are speculating in Bitcoin for the moment as well, so it isn't it isn't really possible to introduce new things when we have the old kind of mentality. But still, it's interesting that people uh, come up with new ideas. And I mean, in, in Denmark and Sweden, we have interest-free banks like uh, Jok, G-A-K. And that means that you can save money and you can borrow money without paying any interest. And of course, interest, I mean, the concept of having interest means that you have that you you think that you should earn money from just possessing money which means that our economy has to grow all the time and when the economy has to grow we have, we have to take more of natural resources and we are sort of it it becomes a strain on, on this planet so it's very important that we uh, in the future we will take away all kinds of interests it's, it's not according to, to the laws and, and the cycles. Another way we can do right now is that we can save our money in ethical banks and in ethical, uh, well, where, where we know where they use the money. I mean, in Sweden there is, for example, Ekobanken, where you can decide that you want to save the money for a, an organic farming project or a, an art project or something like that. And it feels very good that if you have some money, you put it into good projects. Because right now, if you put your money into the bank, it might be that it's used for weapons and building up uh, nuclear plant stations and, and things like that. So I like the concept of uh, ethical banks. There are many people also, especially now when there are finan financial crises and unemployment going on, and there are many people who, go to, uh, who come together and try new economic systems. For example, there are uh, tryouts with time banks. And time bank uh, is actually a, a cosmic concept because Martinez says that what we will do in the future is that we will pay with our time. So one hour, uh, uh, if I buy something, it will be more like, okay, this costs three hours of work, which means that uh, all kinds of work will have the same value. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor or if you're a cleaner or whatever. Today you have all of these different wages, but in the future, you will, if you work one hour, it will be the same for every person. 
So there are people forming these kind of banks where they sort of exchange uh, maybe babysitting for mending the bike or something like that. And you do it just with time. And there are also other systems where you collect points and you can buy things from that. So it's very interesting that now when uh, some of our economy is collapsing, people find new ways and they try out new things. And without knowing it, they are actually moving a little bit more uh, towards uh, a cosmic way of dealing with economy. So there, is, there are also other ways uh, that will change a lot in the future. And one of the things that Martinez explains is that we are in a transformation of, our, of being males and females. So at the core, Martinez tells that we are both males and females. Uh, we have both of, these, uh, both of these poles. And here we see a man with his male pole, and he also has a female pole, so he is a whole being during most of this cosmic spiral cycle. But in this uh, part where we are right now, where we are uh, terrestrial mass and, and animals and so on, there the one part of us has been cut off and we appear as men and women. And when we are men and women, we are not whole beings. We also feel that we lack something. So we try to attach a being from the opposite sex to us. And because of that, we have had marriage, and uh, you could say that family has been the stable structure for our evolution. But right now, something is happening in us. The opposite pole is growing, and it means that I'm becoming more male, and men are becoming more uh, fe female, and we are growing to become more whole in ourselves. And because of that, the old structure of family is, uh, it doesn't hold uh, for everyone. I mean, still there are people who really like to be a family and, and they love it and so on, and they should just be there. But so many people are moving out of this. And we will see in the future, and we already see, that people are trying out new ways of living together. Um, I just took a photo here from a, a community near where I live, where people have uh, they have formed a community, they have their own apartments, but they also sort of eat and have uh, lots of uh, things together. So, of course, it's, it's sort of uh, a good step towards something else. You can still have your family, you can still live your own life, but you can also share with more people. And I think what's happening right now is that more and more people feel that marriage or just having a partner isn't enough. It's also very important to grow friendships, to have a larger community in a way to, to, uh, to be social with. And I think we will see all kinds of things here in the future. And we will see all kinds of new families. And of course, uh, here we also have to say that more and more people are no longer only attracted to the opposite sex, they will also be attracted to the same sex. So we have homosexual and we have sort of rainbows families and different constellation and we don't really know what people will do of it. But there will of course be many way of experimenting with new forms of life together. And uh, this is a difficult time. It is uh, difficult to leave the old tradition of being married, of having one partner that you can always count on and sort of just stepping into unknown uh, land and not knowing what will happen. But it is also necessary that we do this in a slow way, in a way that feels comfortable to us, because we cannot any longer really be fulfilled by the old way of living. And I guess in the next, next hundreds of years, we will see lots of things going on on this area. And also here, we have to follow the cycle. We have to find new ways of uh, being together. And a good first step is to, to get good friends. Because once our partner leaves us, then we are stuck with our friends. So they better be good. And you could say that uh, our friends, it's, it's a new kind of family that we are building. And when we are here at Clint, we are really training this kind of new family life together. And 
we also have talked about a lot of en environments and how we treat nature. And when we look at nature, we could see that there are cycles all, always. We know the water cycles, we know that the leaves f fall down uh, in autumn, for example, and they decompose and are eaten by the worms and they come back at new nutrients for the tree next year. And everything has these kind of cycles. And we also see it inside our body, like uh, the heart and circulation, it, it, it's also a cycle. So it's kind of a form that nature uses. And we could say that uh, because of, of uh, these cycles, uh, we also have to recycle. Nature never produces waste, so everything is used over and over again. And I think some of you are, uh, have seen this uh, concept of cradle to cradle, which is a way of producing things that you already, from the beginning, have seen that every tiny part of you produce can be recycled and can be used to, uh, for something new. So uh, a lot of logic, a lot of planning needs here so that we can actually produce things in a good way. And I think here is here we need a lot of good brains for in the future. Me, myself, I'm quite interested in a concept which is called permaculture, which comes from Australia. And it's a way of, uh, in a way, looking at the principles of life and seeing, is it possible to, to apply these principles to our way of building up lives? So, if, uh, for example, if you, if you look at nature, you will see all the cycles. You will see that there are interdependency, that everything is dependent upon everything else, and there is a lot of cooperation in nature. And we will also see that there is a multitude of, uh, of uh, plants and animals, and there is abundance. It's quite interesting that nature is always built with abundance. Just think of our own body. For example, you can live with one kidney, so it's sort of abundance in our body. We are built in a way that uh, some parts can be destroyed and we are still alive. And that's also a concept for the whole of life. It's built with abundance. Right now we think that we are always scarce of thing, things. We always think that we don't have enough money and enough time and enough whatever. But it's, 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 uh, that concept is wrong because life is built with abundance and we should try to get into that concept when, when we uh, form our lives. Another concept in nature is that there is always multifunction. Something doesn't only have one function. I mean, uh, a bird eats uh, a cherry and then it flies away and, and it drops the, the kernel and it starts a, a new cherry tree. So lots of things, they just go on and they have lots of functions. Another interesting um, principle is a border effect, which we talk about in permaculture, is border effect, which means that when uh, two different parts meet, you will have a lot of life. For example, here down by the sea, you have land meeting sea. And uh, so there you have lots of animals, lots of plants that, uh, wants to, to, that want to live there. And exactly the same things will happen with uh, cultures, where different culture, human cultures meet. There will be lots of uh, things going on. It creates new art, it creates new kinds of meeting points for people. So uh, permaculture for me is interesting because it is a design system where you sort of see how is life, how is nature designed, and then you try to uh, create something with, with this principle, but you try to create, uh, for example, a garden or uh, a way of living that is really sustainable because you are really using the principles of, of life. And we also try to create, for example, forest gardens and agroforestry, which is a mixture of uh, a garden and forest. And everything we put there uh, is useful. We only use edible plants, but we try to use the concept that we find from nature. And we can see that all over the world, people are trying to bring more life into the cities, green roofs. Uh, it's very it's a very good thing in many big towns. It, uh, 
It can take care of some of the water. It lowers the temperature in towns. And you can even have a garden on, on the rooftop. And you can have green walls. And you can experiment with a lot of life also into uh, buildings and so on. And of course, people in the future will try to find lots of different ways of living, building new houses. Uh, I like this recycled house where you use uh, bottles and cans and so on, and adobe, and, and then you just make a, a house out of recycled materials. And this is uh, a house from uh, Findhorn, the, the spiritual community in Scotland, uh, where they built houses from whiskey barrels. <laughs> so when you don't drink any longer, still you can do something with the barrels. Uh, so actually, the cycle is everywhere. And it can, if the more we study nature itself, the more we can design, we can find ways to, to create a sustainable way of living. And that is the task of all of us. That is something that we will actually work with now a lot, I think, during our, this lifetime and our next lifetimes. We will see how can we organize uh, our food production, how can we make transportation, energy, economy, everything. Lots of uh, interesting subjects that we can all work with. And the cycle, I think, that is also very interesting as a concept also when we go through different uh, processes. Because we have to understand that everything is a process. Quite often when we're having a good time, we're having a good job and a good partner and, and uh, everything is nice, we think of this as a static period. We just want to stay there and keep it forever. But life is constantly flowing. So, uh, and our task right now is also to find that flow to uh, understand that we should move all the time. And when we have difficult times, if we have that concept that life is static, then we got stuck and we don't want to accept what's happening. I want my old job back. I can't accept it. We start fighting and uh, we, being a, we, we become aggressive or we get very... Um, sorry for something and so on. So there are lots of these animal parts of us coming up when we are trying to stop the flow. And of course, it is m much more difficult to go through, uh, well, some losses or something like that, if we are constantly trying to stop the flow. But if we understand that when something bad happens, it's just part of the flow. It's just, we are just on the journey. Someone is bringing us a message, and that message is, it's time to leave now. It's time to go on to a new stage. It's time to give a place for new things happening in your life. That kind of concept makes it much more easy for us to, to actually live our lives and to be happy and to, to, well, to enjoy our lives. So from a cosmic point of view, Martinus has made this uh, symbol, which is the internal body. And we can see that there is the point of stillness, there is the eye, but all of the rest is just flowing energies. So in a way we could say that we are very fluent, we are flowing beings, we are just on journeys, we are receiving energies, we are giving out energies, and it's just a long journey. Or in a way you could say that life is just a good party, constantly meeting good people, constantly meeting new consciousness, and constantly just learning different ways of loving each other. Thank you very much.